Hi, everybody. Welcome to the February Pressbooks product update. I'm Steel Wagstaff, and what I want to do is start by sharing some of the recent features and things that we've released that we think might be of interest for many of you. So first, let me share my screen. There is a an agenda here for this meeting. It's the product update agenda. And so here were the new features you might have missed. I want to talk about two things that came out that are kind of core Pressbooks related. Uh, and then we'll talk about the Pressbooks directory, which is, I think, what most of you are excited for. So first, um, a couple of weeks ago, we released a new uh, minor release of Pressbooks. There were a few changes in it, but the biggest one is we noticed that there was a bug that was affecting how the cloning routine worked for very large books. Uh, it was something that we were inheriting from WordPress, having to do with the sort order and the display for large numbers of items. In particular, it would affect books that had, like this book that had hundreds of glossary terms. Anytime we got into the hundreds, there were some cases where the cloning routine would produce duplicate glossary terms and not always capture all of them. So a few weeks ago, we Oscar built this. This was one of his first contributions to Pressbooks Core. So thank you, Oscar. Um, but now you'll notice that when you have a very large book and clone it, all of the glossary terms and all the other things will should be cloned successfully. So that was shipped a few weeks ago. If you had been noticing problems with super large book cloning previously, you could try recloning now and it should be resolved. Um, another big release that, that a feature came out, this was something that Ricardo actually worked on for us. Um, we made some changes to our SAML uh, SSO plugin. If you don't know what that means, that's probably okay. But this is a authentication method that's used by a lot of campuses for their NetID process. So many of you know that if you, uh, you can hook up your Pressbooks networks to use your campus NetID authentication method. And we made a change to the SAML plugin so that we're using the SAML attribute name instead of something called a friendly name. This shouldn't affect any end users. You're just putting in your NetID and password the same, but we just refactored the kind of algorithm that we use to check for the right attributes. And it's a better, more secure way of handling SAML attribute sign on. Um, we've worked this out with all of the network managers that were affected. So some of you on the call have had some previous email exchange with me. That's in production now. And um, we're, we're using a slightly better method with some better fallbacks for the SAML login. So the thing I want to talk about next is the Pressbooks directory. So most of our energy and our effort has been iterating and improving the Pressbooks directory. So the first thing that I want to show you is if you go to the actual Pressbooks directory now, you'll notice that the number of books has grown and so has the number of networks. We were really excited because we now have a bunch of open source networks that weren't initially included when we first launched the directory. I'll make this a little bit bigger. I see some people leaning forward a bit. So um, for example, since Clint and Josie are here, here's the BC Campus Open Publishing Network. So I could look just for the BC Campus books and you can see we've got 120 something books now from BC Campus including a lot of those uh, OpenStax books that Josie and others have worked so hard to bring into Pressbooks. Those are now discoverable from the Pressbooks directory and are pretty great. Um, they also have this second BC Campus Pressbooks network with another 200 books that's now available on this network. A lot of you know Billy Menke at Hawaii, the Hawaii books. There's 11 of them that are really great that are now included here. Uh, Alberta is hosting a Pressbooks network for their province in an open source way. And so we're now including their books. There's another 14 or so books with a growing number. Really great stuff here. A lot of them have H5P activities, which some of you will be interested in. Uh, and then we added Plymouth State. So they, that's where Robin DeRosa is. Some of you know Robin. Um, they have an open source Pressbooks network and now all of their books are included in the directory. Oh yeah, UMass Amherst, that was really fun. So they have a bunch of great books. They often come to these meetings. Um, they have some cool theater stuff. My favorite one from UMass Amherst, I shouldn't have favorites, but one that I really like from UMass Amherst, they have a terrific introduction to women, gender, sexuality studies book that's now in the directory. And they also have this really cool book about beekeeping and radical politics that I loved. Um, some of you may be interested as well. There's a, a great book by a uh, East Asian studies professor about Tokyo University and their wartime history. And then they have a cool book about transforming systemic change in higher education, which is particularly relevant for people who are thinking about inclusivity in STEM. So, you know, there's a bunch of great books all over the place. All of the people have terrific books. They're now in the directory. If you're aware of an open source network that should be included but isn't, 
please let us know and we would love to work with those network managers to get their books listed in the directory if they want to have them there. Thank you to the people at BC Campus and to these other networks who did work on their side, both to produce these books and also to make sure they could be listed in our directory moving forward. Um, another exciting change, these are some things that are coming soon um, and I'm showing you them for the first time. We're gonna be adding something called a product tour for the directory. And this is what it will look like in, the, in reality when it launches. This is something that Oscar has built. So when you come to the Pressbooks directory, there'll be a button that says, take the tour. And you'll see a little JavaScript overlay that will kind of guide you through the main components of the Pressbooks directory. So for example, this will say, here's the search bar. And it tells you what the search bar does and what it doesn't do. And then it will give you an example. This, if you want to search for multiple words, you type both of them in and it uses an and operator. If you want to search for an exact phrase, you can put the exact phrase in and it will search for an exact phrase with quotation marks. If you want to exclude a word or a phrase, you can use this minus sign and it explains what that does. And then it says, here's how you conduct a search, press the button and your search results will change. There's a little explainer that helps you understand the results and the sort and number of cards per page option. There's a little box that will explain how facet filters work. Librarians and other people that use advanced databases often know how faceting search works, but many beginning users are just used to Google. And so faceting search can take a bit of explaining. So this will explain a little bit about how faceted searches work. This explains the include filter and the exclude filter. An include filter will say, yes, include all books that have this. An exclude filter says, show me only books that don't have this. You can um, combine filters and you can use multiple at the same time. Many of you have seen that. So let me jump back to the product tour and um, show you. Okay, so I am here at the faceted search stage. You can clear your filter buttons. This will show you where your active filters are. You can clear all of the active filters by using this button. And then we kind of talk you through the book card. So each book card has a bunch of information on it. Then there's a section that shows you other information. And this tour will tell you what each of these sections mean. This is a language thing. This shows you the license. Hovering over it will tell the license name. This is the H5P logo. And it, we explain what H5P means for people who aren't familiar with it. And then at the end of the tour, it says, do you want to know more about the directory? There's a chapter in our guide that will show you all this stuff in greater detail. So that should be coming hopefully by the end of this week, maybe early March. Um, thanks to Oscar who's built that. That's our first product tour. It's the first time we've done something like this. So it was really fun to design and build. If you have feedback for us, we're always open to hear what kind of features you think should be included to make the directory more accessible or more usable for people who are encountering it for the first time. Um, another thing that's coming soon, um, we are working on something called recommended books. So the basic idea would be um, as people pro provide more metadata about their books, we want to be able to surface and show um, that certain books have been recommended or have complete metadata. So the idea would be something like this. There'll be a little facet or filter that says, show me recommended books. And then you would see a little flag over here that says, oh, this book has been recommended. Generally, what we'll try to do is recommend books that have complete metadata and that look like they're finished and ready for adoption or for use. They would need to have an open license, et cetera. What we're planning to do is this week, we're going to send out a communication to everybody. You can see it right now if you want, but basically we're going to tell everybody that we're going to launch this feature soon and what you or your authors can do to get your book eligible to be recommended in a certain way. So um, we're not 100% set on the language recommended. We might use like complete metadata or something a bit less um, pushy. But the basic idea is if you have updated metadata for your book, and here's how you can update your metadata, and the book is looks complete or looks well made, then we'll start adding it to this recommended list. Um, and the other thing that we may begin doing is we are going to start building what are called featured collections. So the idea would be on the directory, we'll display a set of collections, uh, books on a given topic or on a given subject. So for example, this might be a set of books that would be really useful for dual or high enrollment courses. So you could click on that filter 
And what it would do is it would show you a whole set of books that belong to that collection. There'll also be a collection filter here. So you can see some of the collections that we're building out. Another example might be uh, accessibility and inclusivity. We might have a set of books that are all about accessibility or inclusivity. And that would be an example of a collection that we built out. Another example might be vocational and trades. So these aren't actual collections. They haven't built them yet. This is just a demo of the idea. Uh, we might build a set of books about open education or open pedagogy. That could be a collection. And another collection might be all of the OpenStax books that have been brought into Pressbooks. So we could show you all of the OpenStax books. The idea is that we're going to start building a series of collections of uh, books on given topics, and they'll be available to be kind of searched for and filtered in the directory. That's something we're really excited about um, and we hope to be bringing to you in the next month or two. Um, the other thing that we've done is we have also on the back end of Pressbooks, we have a tool that's called the directory fetcher is what we call it. And it's the tool that goes out to each network and it will grab information about books and store it in a database so that we can display it in the directory. Right now that fetcher runs every hour and it goes and looks for new information and it updates the directory every hour on the hour. We also have built a tool that would let us say, oh, let's say there's an entire network that got out of sync somehow, or they've made major changes, or they wanna just reset their, their listing. We can now just sync all of the books from a given network instead of having to resync all 2000 books. So that's a really helpful tool that helps us. So if you notice that there's something systemically wrong about your network, we, we don't think that'll ever be the case for you if you're hosting with us, but it might, it might happen from time to time with open source networks. So if we need to resync all of the books for one network and one network only, we have a tool that will allow us to do that now. So if you notice some things that are majorly wrong with your network, we can always um, fix that and resync them as needed. I have been working with a practicum student from McGill. His name is Travis Wall. He's terrific. He is working on a uh, UX survey. So we're going to be sending out a survey to the people, an optional survey, to just ask them about their user experience, what it's like to search and find books on the directory, what works for them with the search tool, what works and doesn't work for the facets and filters, what works and doesn't work for the book cards. Um, we expect the survey would take maybe 10 or 15 minutes to complete. And we're really, we're really interested in as wide a set of responses as we can get. We will use that feedback to help us improve the interface and the search and finding experience for the directory. That's something we're really serious about doing. We wanna make this easy for people to find the things they're looking for. So in the next week, in addition to that recommended books message, we're expecting to send out um, an invitation to participate in a UX survey and um, would welcome feedback from anybody who wants to share uh, responses to that survey with us. So those are the things that I wanted to share in relation to the directory. I'm gonna pause there and take questions. Go ahead, Anita. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in how the metadata works with uh, recommended books and featured collections. So sounds like you could apply the filters and then the recommended will actually be a tag saying amongst the things that match your filter, these are the ones we recommend. And are they recommended because the metadata gives you a better book card? Is that how it all works? G generally, yeah. We would I, I think we're still working out the criteria that we're going to use to recommend a book because what we're not trying to say is that we vouch for the content. We're not, we're not trying to make a judgment about the content. Right. What we're trying to say is this book has complete metadata and it has an open license that allows you to clone it and remix it. That's so primarily what we're trying to do with recommending books. So, so the recommendation is to promote the fact that this is an open licensed OER, right? You can yeah, say you can feel safe using cloning whatever this book because we have we this this author or publisher has promised us that it meets these you know check marks by exactly yeah and it, it's basically just like complete metadata and we'll we'll try to do like a basic quality check to be like oh does it have if it has a bunch of empty chapters that say still working on still working on we'd probably be like well, it's late to recommend that until it looks like the book is done or whatever but but essentially it's what we want to try to do is help people increase the relevance of the search results that they're seeing. And so this is kind of meant to be a proxy for that to say, if you want to see books that have full metadata 
and that have an open license, it's a quick way to kind of turn that filter on or sort and the then, results. And then how do you kind of figure out the criteria for featured collections then? It's going to be largely something that our the internal librarian staff will do. Mainly it's going to be uh, Lee at Pressbooks is thinking about what do I want to do to help us like share kind of a set of books on a collection for kind of content marketing purposes generally. So Lee has defined a set of broad collections that she's going to start with. And then over time, if people say, hey, I think it'd be really good to have a collection on, you know, uh, chemistry books or we can build math collections or we could build a collection on anything that people suggest. So the idea is we have a set of like probably eight or nine topics we know, or we have at least 15 books that are kind of would belong to that topic. So we'll build out a collection of books on that topic that we think are well done or well made or good representative books. So that feature is it can grow and expand over time. But the basic idea would be, let me just kind of show the screen again. Here you'll see any of the collections that exist will be listed here. So as new collections get added, they'll just show up in the collection filter. And then you could turn on and say, only show me the books that are in this collection. Um, let me show you on the directory that has more books in it. Um, my staging. If you wanna see this yourself, you can go to the staging, that pressbooks.directory site. Again, just note that this is a site that's always subject to change, but you can you can look and play with the feature as it exists here. So for example, I'd say, oh, let's look at the nursing healthcare books. These are not actually nursing healthcare books. These are just random books that we've given that collection title to, to kind of work with this concept. But the idea would be, oh, okay. There's also an interactive OER collection. Some cool books that we think have really good interactive OER. So the idea would be, I'd look here and I'd say, oh, okay. Here's a pre-built collection that someone has made of that we that Pressbooks has made of books that meet that topic. Um, and we'll be always trying to review the directory as new stuff comes in and keeping those collections up to date. That'll be a task for our the Pressbook staff. A bit of human curation. Thank you for dropping that link in there, Anita, um, for others. Other people have questions about uh, the featured collection or the featured books or the um, featured, let's see, recommended books or featured collections features that are coming soon? Sorry if I missed this, but um, the email message for recommended books, that's something that you're wanting uh, network admins for us to send out to select authors on our networks. Um, and did you say that, that that would be next week or what was the timing around uh, that? My goal is to send it out, uh, was hopefully to send it out today or tomorrow. Um, so I'd like to send it before the end of this, this week. I'll be emailing network managers. And then network managers can choose to share that with their with anybody on their network if they'd like to or not. It's really up to them. But it's just an invitation for people to check their metadata and ensure that it's good because the directory is only as good as the metadata that's entered. We know that's extra work, but hopefully there'll be an incentive for people to do it because then their books would be more visible and more useful to others. Thanks. Steele, you know, you were mentioning that you were going to probably, if a book like had missing chapters and put some content here future kind of things you would might not put that in the featured um thing i it's occurred to me that another thing that might want to sort of de uh prioritize something going as a feature thing would be whether it's um sort of fails a lot of accessibility checking um and i was just thinking about that while other people were asking questions it occurred to me actually that's a feature that would be wonderful if the whole of press books you know it would be nice if you could like click a button as a network manager, manager and it would automatically run, say, the WebAIM wave tool on your entire book and all of run, like recursively run it down the, the tree of web pages for the ebook version. And I mean, I don't know if there's an API to that tool or, but it would be yeah, neat if you had, if there were a summary. It, it, would, of, it would be so neat. You're right, Jonathan. So there are two people on this call that have probably talked with me more about this issue than anyone else in the world. So Lauren from you, the University of Washington has been very interested in that. And also Josie at BC campus is a real accessibility expert. Um, yeah, I, I think we would love to make a better accessibility checker tool or an accessibility checker tool for Pressbooks authors. We've explored a couple of options and we haven't found something that's, that will work perfectly for us, but it's very high in our priority list. And I would love to see us work on and, and deliver something that could do that in the, in the coming year. I think Oscar and Ricardo are both here hearing this. So Oscar and Ricardo will, will look in the future probably at some tools that would let people run a good accessibility checker on their output. And having that built into the Pressbooks editor would be really great. 
And I can see there's definitely appetite from the community for that. Lauren or Josie, did either of you want to add anything on that since you're both uh, very deep in on that? No, I just, yeah, I, I, I think it would be, we have a similar, we have an accessibility checker for Canvas um, course sites and there's been a big push on our campus to um, have faculty use that and this comes up really regularly when I talk with instructors about creating books and press books and students who want to just know that they're um, what they're creating is ex as as accessible as possible so just plus one to that as a, a tool that our authors would really appreciate so I can tell you a little bit if, you, if people are interested a little bit of the status of the research for us so the Lauren mentioned there is an accessibility tool for Canvas. What's nice about their tool is it is open source, like it's open source. So last year we explored, we did a demo where we uh, integrated or plugged in that Canvas accessibility tool into the Pressbooks interface. It could work. It's written in a different code base and it has a very different UI. So we'd have to like reskin it and restyle it. But we did some testing to see whether it would be feasible or possible to do with Pressbooks. And, it probably could be brought over with some major modifications. There's also a very uh, popular accessibility checker tool made by Blackboard called Blackboard Ally. Um, it is not open source to my knowledge, so it would, we'd have to figure out how and if we could integrate that. Um, and then the third option that we did look at was uh, there is also an accessibility checker tool for the tiny MCE visual editor that Pressbooks uses, but it is also a proprietary plugin. And so we've had some conversations with them about whether we could license it and use it in the Pressbooks interface, but we don't have a good, great, clear answer yet. And we don't know what that would look like for our open source users, which is another concern. We, we, so, so we've done a bit of initial exploration um, and have some ideas about the direction that could go, but we don't have anything that we're ready to release yet, but it is of importance to us and we know it would make a big difference for our users. and ultimately for the downstream readers who want accessible content as well. So thanks everybody for confirming that's important to you and hopefully we'll have a good update in one of these future meetings about exciting things to share or to test or progress made on that front. I have a quick question. It's not really about the demo, but I noticed with the directory that the when you display the description for a book, you're pulling from the long description rather than the short description. And in my experience, people are much more likely to fill out the short description than the long description. So I was just wondering why that decision was made. Yeah, good question. So we do, the, the book the directory displays the long description rather than the short description. And the short answer is that that's because that's the field that's available in the, that, that was made available in the API. So okay. we could, <laughs> um, yeah, we've noticed the same thing. So we're gonna be thinking about that and changing that. So. In, in case you weren't quite following what Josie was saying, because it's a little bit technical, uh, let me just show you an example. In Pressbooks, when you build a book and you go to your book info page, there are two fields that you can enter descriptions for. Uh, here you have a short description, and here you have a long description. Um, in our experience, Josie and mine probably both, there are more people who enter a short description than who enter a long description but the directory displays the long description and not the short description. The reason why more people fill in the short description is because when you visit the book's homepage, it's the short description that displays here. The long description would show up here if it was entered. The, the issue that we're having with the directory is in the Pressbooks directory, there is a description field. Uh, let me show one that has a good description here this description field. This description field will show you the long description for a book. There's nothing in the book card that shows the short description. So there's a little bit of a mis mismatch of expectations or of practice there. Um, currently, part of the process is just informing people that the description field in the directory is populated from the long description field, whereas the description that displays in the most prominent place on a book homepage is populated from the short description field. And um, we still have some probably work and coordination to do with that. Okay, so that concludes the Pressbooks demo portion. Uh, thank you for coming to the demonstration and the product update. Well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the recording off and this is gonna be a chance for any of you to share projects that you're working on or things that you're excited about uh, and that might be of interest to others.